Hello everyone, you are watching Finance Concepts with Nikhil. In this session, let us begin with a wonderful concept in finance titled as derivatives. My friends, before we begin with derivatives, let us have complete clarity about financial markets. So you should know what is a financial market and you should understand various components of financial market, the entire hierarchy about financial markets. So friends, in one line, if I have to tell you what is a financial market, I would simply say financial market is a market where people trade in financial securities. And over here, the term securities would mean shares, bonds, currencies, other financial instruments and securities over here would also mean derivatives. In simple words, what I'm trying to tell you is derivative market itself is a component of financial market. So I want you people to pay attention on the screen and let us understand everything about financial market and its hierarchy. As I have just mentioned, a financial market is a market in which people trade financial securities. Securities include stocks and bonds. They also include currencies and other financial instruments and securities also include derivatives. So that is why derivative market is component of financial market. So let us understand the hierarchy of the financial markets. And here we go. Financial markets are broadly classified into three main categories, money market, capital market and forex market. Now everything about forex market we are definitely going to cover in the topic forex. Right now let us focus on money market and capital market. The line of difference between money market and capital market is drawn on the basis of term involved. So when the securities or when the instruments have a short term, a term less than a year, a term less than 12 months, they are classified as components of money market. Where the term involved is longer than 12 months, that means all long term securities, all long term instruments will come under capital market. So let us have a very clear distinguishment between the two that is all short term securities they are traded in money market all long term securities traded in capital market. Now friends capital market securities themselves classified into two categories bonds and shares. So for bonds we have bond market or debt market and for shares we have share market or stock market or stock exchange. Now each of these markets are further classified into primary market and secondary market. So let us first understand what is a primary market and secondary market. Let us assume that the company is coming up with a public offer. That means it is an IPO or FPO being announced by a company. So company is coming up with a share issue and public who are investors they are subscribing. Now this activity takes place in primary market. Now once the shares have been floated by the company, these shares are traded among the investors in the stock market. That part of stock market where these shares are traded, where the floated securities, where the floated shares are traded, that means these are constantly bought and sold on day to day basis among the investors. That happens in secondary market. So as I have just mentioned capital market classified into debt market and stock market and now stock market classified into two components primary market and secondary market. For that reason even money market and debt market are classified into each of these segments that is primary market and secondary market. My friends our focus right now is on the stock market. So let us focus on stock market only. So the secondary market part of the stock market is further classified into spot market and derivative market. Spot market also known as cash market and derivative market also known as FNO market. FNO stands for futures and options. So basically derivative market has two components futures and options and each of these are classified into further three categories. These are stock futures, index futures and currency futures. Likewise options are also classified into same three types that is stock options, index options and currency options. 
all right friends let us move ahead and discuss meaning of derivative so friends derivative is simply a contract between two parties which is expected to be settled at a future date that means it could be a contract to buy something or sell something at a future date but at a price which is agreed today so any kind of contract to buy or sell something immediately at present at the spot cannot be termed as derivative one of the very important feature of derivative is that a derivative is to be settled at a future date it's a contract to buy something or sell something at a future date now why it is called a derivative it is because of its characteristic of deriving its value from the value of the underlying now here it might sound a little confusing for you at the early stage if you are listening to this concept for the first time but my friends that is the beauty of the term derivative the term derivative means the contract does not have value of its own it derives the value from the value of the underlying so let me explain this through an example suppose you want to buy shares in my company my company named as nj limited and you want to buy 500 equity shares of my company now you find that these shares are currently quoted in stock market at rupees 1000 each you come to me and you request me that sir i would want to buy 500 shares in your company i said okay fine these shares are being traded in the stock market today at rupees 1000 per share okay see this piece of paper this is not any ordinary piece of paper this is a stamp paper it's a legal paper and on this legal paper i am just writing up a contract where i am making you eligible to buy 500 equity shares in my company nj limited after 3 months from now at a price of rupees 1000 per share and i have signed it and given to you now this is the right that you are holding if this is the right you are holding you can simply go and declare that boss i have this right to buy equity shares in nj limited which nobody else has only i have this right this is what you can go and declare but be careful when you declare this fact that you have this right people might laugh at you why people might laugh at you they would say what is the worth of this right if these shares you can anyway buy today at the open market price of rupees 1000 what's the worth of this right what's the value of this right and you may get upset oh my god what is the value of this right the value of this right is nothing it's true it is worthless this right is worthless so what was this right for was i just making fun of you no my friends this contract at present definitely worthless but it will not expire today it will expire after 3 months over 3 months time the share price of nj limited is not going to remain same that price in the stock market is going to fluctuate with the fluctuation of that stock price this contract will have some value derived out of this just imagine say after 3 months the share price of nj limited goes to 1250 per share now this makes so much of sense something which is traded in the market at 1250 you have right to purchase this through this contract of course you have right to purchase this at just rupees 1000 now with each share bought at 1000 as per this contract whereas open market price is 1250 obviously you are going to make a benefit of rupees 250 per share for yourself and rupees 250 per share multiplied by 500 shares which would give you a value of 1 lakh 25000 so my friends this contract attains value of that 1 lakh 25000 over a period this contract did not have any worth of its own it has derived the value from the price movement of the equity share of nj limited and that equity share of nj limited in this example we are calling as an underlying asset and therefore the term derivative is referred to as a contract which derives its value from the value of its underlying asset 
so friends when you have purchased this contract from me that day you did not buy the shares you have simply purchased this contract you might have paid me some amount a nominal amount for buying this contract therefore initially when you are entering into the contract you don't have to make substantial investment all these are important features of the definition of derivative which i would summarize by saying derivative is a contract between two parties expected to be settled at a future date and which derives its value from the value of its underlying and most important thing initially you don't have to make entire big amount of investment either no initial investment or a very small amount of initial investment is required so my friends please pay attention to the screen and i explain you this whole thing in a picturized format as i have just mentioned a derivative is a contract between two parties expected to be settled at a future date its value is derived from the value of the underlying assets and no initial investment or very small amount of initial investment is required these four important components of the definition of derivative should always be in your mind let me now take you ahead with that example what we have just discussed you want to acquire 500 equity shares in nj limited each equity share is presently quoted at rupees 1000 you enter into a contract under which after 3 months you can buy 500 equity shares in nj limited at rupees 1000 each the contract gives you the right to buy 500 equity shares so what is happening in this example you as an investor you declare that you are interested in buying shares in nj limited and you also declare that you don't want to buy it now you want to buy these shares after 3 months and nj limited offers you right to buy 500 shares at rupees 1000 each after 3 months and through a contract signed and delivered now this is a derivative this is a derivative because it fulfills the conditions of derivative what we have just understood it offers you an option to buy the shares at rupees 1000 not to forget the fact that presently these shares are traded in the market at rupees 1000 so if presently the shares of nj limited are priced at rupees 1000 in the open market this contract is worthless however if after 3 months the price of these shares turn to be rupees 1250 per share now i have explained you this matter already something which is traded in the market at rupees 1250 and you have a right to buy these shares at just 1000 this contract will attain some value the worth of this contract will be difference between 1250 and 1000 multiplied by 500 shares which works out to rupees 125000 so the contract has derived this value from the price movement of the underlying asset that is shares in nj limited what happens if the price of the shares goes to rupees 950 after 3 months it will be better to buy these shares from open market rather than exercising this right or using this option contract as a result this contract again becomes worthless so one concluding point is that this is a derivative because it derives its value from the movement in the price of the shares and now let us understand some important conclusions that can be drawn from this example number 1 the contract is a derivative instrument because it fulfills all the conditions of a derivative it gives you right to buy the shares the underlying asset is the equity shares in nj limited the value of the contract changes with the changes in the price of the equity shares it derives its value from the value of the equity shares my dear friends you need not write up all this because in your textbooks these points have been mentioned exactly the same way so let me now take you to another very important point while in the example given above the underlying asset was equity shares in the derivative market underlying asset could be commodities precious metals foreign exchange rates and interest rate relating to financial assets and even market indices all right let us move ahead and talk about functions of derivatives one very important function that derivatives are expected to perform 
Financial derivatives help in facing financial risk arising due to changes in prices, interest rates and currency rates and such instruments provide a commitment to prices for a future date thereby protect a party against future adverse movements. Let us understand this concept through an example. Suppose in an international trade situation you are an importer you have recently made an import of the value US dollar 10,000. So obviously you are under obligation to settle that import bill or that invoice. Now this amount of US dollar 10,000 you have to settle but not now maybe after three months because the supplier has given you a free credit of three months you would obviously want to utilize that credit but you have a fear you have a risk on your head that is today suppose the spot exchange rate of US dollar is INR 72 that means you require INR 72 to buy each US dollar today but that rate is not going to remain the same ahead this rate is definitely going to fluctuate US dollar has been priced on a high volatility in recent time what we have observed as a result to protect yourself you have to do something what you do is you approach a bank or an authorized foreign exchange dealer and you go and negotiate with them you tell them that you want to buy 10,000 US dollars after three months from now and you would want to fix a price today you want to commit a price today so currently the spot rate is INR 72 the bank has agreed to supply dollars after three months at a little higher price say INR 73 per US dollar now you have a choice either to enter into forward exchange contract or not so this contract is titled as a forward exchange contract we have learned about this in forex chapter already so when you enter into this contract it will give you a protection why because after three months irrespective of what is the rate prevailing for US dollar in the forex market you are still eligible to buy dollars at rupees 73 only that means your risk of adverse movement of dollar price has been taken care of you are paying little more than what it is prevailing now instead of 72 you are paying 73 you are agreeing to pay a little premium a little higher value on top of what is prevailing now but you are still protected because you will not be suffering with the fluctuation of the dollar price as a result risk on your head has been taken over the question is who took that risk obviously the counterparty the bank has acted as a speculator over here that means bank will arrange these dollars for you for any price of the dollar prevailing in the market that point of time but bank will supply these dollars to you at a committed price of rupees 73 only that means your risk has been taken over by the bank so what we find uh, if I try to name the two types of parties involved over here you who were an importer you are acting like a hedger hedger is a party who would want to shed away its risk in derivative market and the counterparty the bank is acting as a speculator because it is taking away your risk for maybe making some gains for itself as a result derivative market one side provides opportunity to a person like you to hedge their risk on the other side it is providing an opportunity to parties like bank or authorized dealers to take risk and make gains for themselves in this process derivative market it simply what it does is it takes away risk of one party and places it on top of the other so the third point over here would be Financial derivatives also provide opportunities to make profit for those who are ready to bear risk. And finally, in the process, derivative transfer the risk from those who want to avoid it to those who are ready to take the risk. Let us now talk about characteristics of derivatives. The first very important characteristic what we find is 
the transactions in the derivatives are settled by the squaring of such transactions in the same underlying the difference in value of the derivative is settled in cash. Let us discuss this characteristic in the first hand. In the derivative market there is no actual buying and selling that you will ever see. So there is no actual purchase and sale that means when you enter into a contract say a futures contract to buy something you don't actually end up buying. So how is your contract going to be settled? Let us take this through an example. Say you want to buy shares of X limited and the futures price, the futures contract price which will settle after two months from now is priced at 560. You enter into the contract to buy the share at 560, the contract price. You have entered into the contract today, the contract will settle after two months. After two months, suppose the price of the share goes to 580 in the spot market, you are eligible to buy the share at 560. So what happens for each share of X limited, you have made a profit of rupees 20 for yourself. Why? Because something which is priced at 580, you are eligible to buy it at 560. That means you have made a profit of rupees 20 for yourself on each share. Suppose you have entered into a contract of uh, 1000 such shares with a profit of rupees 20 per share multiplied by 1000 shares in total rupees 20,000 is what you have earned as a profit. So when the futures contract is settled out simply that differential of 20,000 will be deposited into your account. This is how derivatives are settled. So there is no actual buying and selling that is going to take place. It is just the settlement of price differential on cash basis. And this leads to the next connecting characteristic that because there is no actual buying and selling taking place, you may enter into any number of contracts you want. You may have no limit to the number of contracts you can enter into because there is no actual delivery going to take place. And that is just another important characteristic of derivatives. So as we have just discussed, there is no limit on the number of units transacted in the derivative market because there is no physical asset to be transacted. And then the next derivatives are only secondary market securities and cannot help in raising funds to a firm. In fact, derivatives arise only when the shares and debentures are already issued by the companies. Let us try to understand this point as well. Now what we have seen in the earlier part of the chapter where we have been talking about the hierarchy of financial markets. Derivative market itself is a component of secondary market. So if you recollect the stock market was classified into primary and secondary market. Primary market where the companies issuing securities and investors are subscribing for the same. In the secondary market the floated securities are traded among the investors and derivative market is a component of secondary market. Because derivative market is a component of secondary market, it has no connection with the primary market and therefore a company which is willing to raise funds cannot raise funds through derivatives. So derivatives are only secondary market securities and funds cannot be raised by companies through derivatives. Let us now talk about types of derivatives. Four types of derivatives have been in existence, forwards, futures, options and swaps. Friends, as and when we proceed ahead in the chapter, we shall discuss each one of these components in details. So let us also talk about participants in derivative market. Generally, the participants may be classified into three types. Number one, hedgers. Number two, speculators. And number three, arbitrators. So we have already discussed who are hedgers and who are speculators. What is something different for you is this arbitrager. But yes, we have learned a bit of arbitrage and concepts relating to arbitrage in Forex chapter already. Anyway, who are hedgers? Hedgers are parties who avoid risk by incurring cost. Speculators are parties who make profit 
by taking risk and arbitrators they are parties who make profit without taking any risk going ahead we talk about the first component of derivatives that is forwards and futures so what is a forward contract a forward contract we have already discussed about this it is a contract for buying or selling a security at a specified date in future but one very important characteristic of this forward contract would be the price has to be agreed today that means what is defined as a forward rate forward rate is a rate which is agreed today but applicable for buying or selling securities at a specified future date and when you enter into a contract using such forward rate as a committed rate such contract becomes a forward contract so let us take this by an example mr a he says i want to buy 500 shares of x limited at rupees 560 each after 3 months mr b says i agree to sell 500 shares of x limited at rupees 560 after 3 months so these parties one is behaving like a buyer another is behaving like a seller and finally they say let us make a deal let us sign a contract and they have agreed and signed a contract now what happens this contract itself is again titled as derivative because again it is fulfilling all the characteristics all the conditions given in the definition of the derivative so if after 3 months the price of the share of x limited turns to be rupees 550 what will happen mr a loses rupees 5000 and mr b gains rupees 5000 why because b has agreed to sell at 560 a has agreed to buy at 560 but the prevailing market price on the settlement date is rupees 550 as a result a has made a loss and b has made a profit and that differential of 560 and 550 multiplied by contract size of 500 shares the total amount of gain or loss for the two parties is coming up as 5000 rupees now what happens if the price goes the other way if after 3 months price of shares of x limited turns to be rupees 570 then what happens is mr a gains rupees 5000 and mr b loses rupees 5000 this time this 5000 has been computed as a difference between 570 and 560 multiplied by 500 shares so this is a derivative contract because it is deriving its value from the moment in the price of the share and this is a forward contract earlier we have taken an example of option contract where the party has simply a right to perform right to buy or sell here in this case both the parties have right as well as obligation that is a very important characteristic of a forward contract let us move ahead and talk about speculation through derivatives before we talk about speculation through derivatives it is very important for anyone to understand what we mean by bullish sentiments bullish sentiments are simply expectation of parties expectation that the price will rise in future so this is all about what you have as an expectation towards the future price if a party has expectation that the price will rise in future we simply say that the party has bullish sentiment and bearish sentiment on the other side indicates expectation that the price will fall my friends i would advise a point of precaution over here where bullish and bearish sentiments should not be misinterpreted as bullish and bearish trends trend in the market indicates what has happened in the past till now that means trend is all about how the price has moved in the past till this point and sentiment is about expectation of the price so trend might be bullish or bearish bullish trend means from the past till now the price has moved upward bearish trend means from the past till now the price has declined bullish sentiment is about 
the expectation of the future price that the price is expected to move up and bearish sentiment is about the expectation of the price in the future that the price is expected to decline so friends decisions in the stock market are always made on the basis of sentiments of the investor not on the basis of trend trend can just provide you a supportive guideline what acts as a major role playing thing is the sentiment of the investor or sentiment of these parties so called hedgers speculators and arbitrages based on their sentiments they plan a trade and then they execute the same and what we see if you have been one of the parties in a forward contract you might either make a gain or incur a loss so forward contracts are simply contracts which will bind both the parties and that binding of both the parties can offer right as well as obligation to perform in the hands of both the parties so let us do one thing that example of mr a and mr b what we have just discussed some time back we extend the same example in a speculative scenario so that we understand speculation through derivatives so let us go ahead so we again find mr a mr a says x limited share quoted rupees 560 now after 3 months price will rise that means we can conclude that mr a has bullish sentiments mr b says no chance after 3 months the price will fall that means mr b has bearish sentiments obviously both the parties cannot be correct one of the sentiments will be correct another will go wrong now mr a further says i agree to buy 500 shares of x limited at rupees 560 each after 3 months because mr a believes that the price is going to further rise he is ready to buy at the current price after 3 months on the other side obviously mr b would agree to sell these shares at 560 after 3 months because mr b believes that the price is going to fall from this level so mr a proposes let us make a speculative deal let us sign a contract and b says we shall square up the price difference in cash so they sign up a contract and the deal is done now what happens afterwards is to be understood now this is again a derivative if after 3 months the price of shares of x limited turns to be rupees 550 mr a loses rupees 5000 and mr b gains rupees 5000 now why 5000 it is because difference of 560 and 550 multiplied by 500 shares would give you a total amount of gain to mr b of rupees 5000 and loss to mr a of the same amount so what should happen because this is derivative it has to be settled by way of price differential in cash what mr a should do mr a should simply pay rupees 5000 to mr b so here comes the claim made by mr b he says come on clear off your due simply pay rupees 5000 so what is unexpected happening over here mr a denies he says do you really think so forget it now here in spite of mr b making a profit mr a is daring to make a default and default in the contract mr b simply cannot do anything someone might think that yes mr b can definitely go to the court of law however for a small amount as involved in this case that is just rupees 5000 mr b may not want to initiate such kind of legal proceedings so what should be done how should such defaults be taken care of people say prevention is better than cure so what can be done pre hand there are ways definitely there are better ways to deal with such a scenario but this thing you have to plan before you enter into such contract i'll show you how to do a better way to deal with defaults like this before signing up the contract both of these parties should have involved an intermediary so assume that mr nj has been called upon as an intermediary and this intermediary says wait before you sign the contract both of you deposit with me rupees 20000 each 
Now, both of yours deposits are with me. So, Mr. A's balance is rupees 20,000. Mr. B's balance is also rupees 20,000. So, what happens after three months of signing the contract? We have seen Mr. A has lost rupees 5,000 and Mr. B has made a profit of rupees 5,000. And how we have calculated this 5,000, we have already discussed earlier. So, Mr. A should pay rupees 5,000 to Mr. B. Now this settlement will be much more simplified in this case. What intermediary will do is simply deduct rupees 5000 from Mr. A's balance making it just 15,000 and will simply add that 5000 to Mr. B's balance making it 25,000. So once the settlement is done Mr. A will not get back rupees 20,000 but would receive only rupees 15,000 and Mr. B on the other side would receive a total amount of rupees 25,000 which is inclusive of the profit element made in this contract. So the root question that now arises is from where to get such intermediaries. So that is not a problem my friends. Derivative market is the intermediary for you. Yes that is why derivative market exists. So simply what you have to do is you have to approach the derivative market and you have to simply register a trade in your name. You have to decide whether you would want to be a buyer or a seller and you don't even have to search for a counterparty. Now, but the arrangement made through a derivative market will not be a forward contract, it will be a futures contract. So futures contract is an upgraded version of a forward contract. So what happens is there will be a particular futures contract quoted in the derivative market with stock which will be the date of settlement, what is the quantity, what is the price, everything is quoted over there. What you can do is simply decide whether you want to be a buyer at that quoted price or you want to be a seller at that quoted price. And I'm telling you, you don't even have to bother about who is going to be the counterparty because derivative market as an intermediary will first of all make a guarantee of performance. Secondly, it will ensure that the settlement is taking place when the time comes. So your all risks of defaults and worries no more exist. You just have to concentrate on the trade. So my friends, what I'm trying to convey now is futures contract is an upgraded version of forward contract and let us now talk about what is a future contract and how does a future contract stands in difference against the forward contract. So what we can conclude is for a variety of reasons future contracts stands superior to forward contracts. So let us also discuss the meaning of futures contract. A future contract is a standardized contract between two parties where one of the parties commits to sell and the other commits to buy a specified quantity of a specified asset at an agreed price on a given date in the future. My friends what you need to do now is to understand the complete meaning of futures contract and also to understand how futures contract differ from forward contracts. So let us look at the main features of a futures contract. Three main features. Number one, the contract is standardized with respect to quantity, date and price. In case of forward contract, it can be completely a customized contract. Two parties sitting across the table, over the counter. They would simply negotiate any terms and conditions they would want. That means there will be a customization of all terms and conditions that is agreed upon between the two parties. Nobody else is going to interfere what they decide that parties who enter into the contract whatever they decide that is full and final. However, that doesn't work in case of a futures contract. Futures contracts are not OTC type means they are not over the counter kind of contracts. These are regulated through the derivative market or regulated through the exchanges. And now what happens? Everything therefore is standardized. You want to have a futures contract of Tata Motors, 
then Tata Motors future contract will be available. It will have a specific date of expiry. It will have a specified quantity. It will have a specified price at which it is prevailing now. So what you can customize nothing. You cannot have any customization. It's a complete standardized contract. Standardization with respect to quantity, price and settlement date. Everything is fixed. So only thing what you can decide is whether you should go for a buying position in that contract or a selling position. The next feature, the clearing house has a key role to play in trading of futures contract because it guarantees the performance. And the third point is the exchange or derivative market would require the parties to maintain a deposit. There is a margin with it. The margin amounts changes with the changes in the daily prices. In effect, the profits and losses are settled on a day to day basis. A futures contract simply upgrades a forward contract into a secured riskless marketable instrument. Let us now talk about important differences between forwards and futures. So the first thing what we have already discussed forward contracts are OTC type that is over the counter type whereas futures contracts are exchange regulated. Futures contracts are standardized with respect to price, quantity and date of settlement. Forward contracts can be customized contracts as required by the parties to the contract. Now the third point is futures contracts are marketable instruments, forward contracts are not. Now this is something important that you should try to understand. What happens in case of forward contract? If a party has entered into a forward contract, that same party has to settle that forward contract. Whereas in case of a futures contract, the contract simply as an instrument can move from hand to hand. That means this becomes a marketable instrument. If I have taken a position in a futures contract, long position or short position, that means the position of either buying or selling, I can simply transfer, I can simply sell that contract to someone else and move out and therefore the contract itself becomes a marketable instrument. If you would have seen cases of bills of exchange, if I hold a bill of exchange, I can simply transfer it to, I can endorse it to some other party and in place of me, that other party becomes the holder of that bill. Exactly same way, futures contracts can be transferred to the other parties, they can become marketable instruments, whereas in case of forward contract, this simply does not happen. Once again, I tell you my friends that you need not write up all these points. These are given in your textbooks. Just try to understand these points very clearly. So let us go ahead and talk about the fourth point. Forward contracts are unique because only those parties should settle the contract who have originally entered into the contract. On the other hand, futures contract provide flexibility of making entry or exit even before maturity. Due to this flexibility, the parties to the contract keep changing. So you would see this fourth point is directly connected to the third point that we have discussed with respect to the marketability of these futures contract. That is futures contracts are marketable instruments. Next, forward contracts have risk of default as the performance is not guaranteed. Whereas in futures contract, there is guarantee of performance as the exchange itself regulates the futures contract. All right, moving ahead. The next point of difference. Forward contracts may or may not require initial margins to be deposited, whereas depositing initial margin is a prerequisite in any futures contract. Next point. Forward contracts may provide for actual buying or selling that is actual delivery. Whereas futures contracts are settled in cash by receiving or paying the differentials in price necessarily. All right, friends, moving ahead, we talk about the next concept, a very important concept that is about long and short positions. Let us understand what are long and short positions. Now, a long position simply indicates a position of buying something now and selling it at a future date that means buying something now and holding it 
with an expectation to sell the same at a future date because we have expectation that the price will move upward that means if i am a trader in the stock market and i believe the prices are going to move upward i have bullish sentiment means in the stock market i should take a long position means i should buy the stock today hold it until the price is moving upward when the price comes to my target when the price comes to the range where i have made my expectations i will sell off then means buying now and selling later that is what we call as a long position in stock market my friends holding a long position in stock market and holding a long position in derivative market has a point of difference so you should never get confused whether you are talking about long position in stock market or long position in derivative market so right now what i'm trying to explain is long position in stock market so long position in stock market simply indicates holding the share now that means buying and holding the share now waiting for the price to move upward and then selling the same because you have bought now at a lower price and you are expecting to sell it later at a higher price you are obviously going to make profit so someone who has a bullish sentiment will take a long position what happens when the prices are expected to drop that means if the investor in the stock market has bearish sentiments then what if i have bearish sentiments i cannot buy the stock now i should rather sell so what happens if i am selling a stock now with an expectation that the prices will drop and then i will purchase it at a later stage short position indicates selling now and buying later however short position has to be sometimes accompanied by what we call as short selling now if you are listening to these terms for the first time it may be little confusing but do not worry i'll explain you in details so let me explain first if i have a stock already in hand and now i am having bearish sentiments i would sell the stock now and repurchase the same at later stage when the prices drop and therefore i will make gains however if i have bearish sentiments and i would want to sell the stock now but i don't have that stock if i don't have the stock then how would i take a short position in the stock market this is to be done through a concept known as short selling what is short selling in simple words you don't have something today in your hand but you would want to sell it so borrow it from someone else and the borrowed stock you can sell it once you have sold the borrowed stock then when the price goes down you can buy it back and once you have bought it back you may return the same to the party from whom you have borrowed earlier that is what we call as a short selling so my friends long position short position and short selling i want you people to concentrate on these three terms very clearly and first what i am trying to explain is not from the view point of derivative market but from the view point of spot market that is the stock market so long position indicates buying now and selling later buying now at a lower price and selling later at a higher price short position indicates selling now at a higher price and buying it back again at a lower price what happens when you do not have the stock in hand then you have to accompany this plan with short selling and short selling indicates borrowing the stock and selling the same when you have borrowed a stock sold the stock you have an obligation to return back the borrowed stock to the party from whom you have borrowed and you wait for the price to drop once the price has dropped you buy back the stock at a low price you make gains and the bought back stock can be returned to the party from whom you have borrowed and finally this is what we call as short selling so friends as we have just discussed long position 
is a position that indicates buying now with the intent to sell later at a higher price obviously this position will be taken when the trader has bullish sentiment short position is a position that indicates selling now with the intent to buy later at a lower price obviously short position is planned by a trader who has bearish sentiment so let us try to understand this better long position as i have just explained imagine that this is the expected price movement that means this is not a trend in the past this is the expected price movement now concentrate on this assume that this point over here is the current price and we are expecting that the price would move and we would want to take entry over here and we would exit the trade at this particular point so what we do is we make entry at a lower price when we make entry at a lower price and plan to make an exit at a higher price we consider this exit as our target so obviously what you would do for making an entry and what would you do for making an exit obviously you would buy at this entry and you would sell at the target this is clearly what is understood as long position let us also try to understand the short position so short position as we have discussed a position that indicates selling now with intent to buy later at a lower price so again imagine that this is the expected price movement right this is the current price point and this is the price what we are expecting to prevail in future so current price is placed over here at which we are trying to make an entry and this is the point where we are trying to plan our target obviously no one would want to buy at a high price and sell at a lower price that means to make benefit you should sell at a high price and buy at a low price so if you have the stock sell it now and buy it again later if you don't have the stock then short selling has to be accompanied over here that means instead of simply saying sell i would say sell short or short selling happens over here at the entry and then when you have to buy you just simply don't call it as a buy rather you call it as buy to cover buy to cover necessarily indicates a position to cover your short selling position that you have made earlier so this draws our attention to discuss the next concept that is short selling short selling involves selling a stock which you don't own and buying it back later to square the position a short seller resorts to this strategy because he expects price to fall and wants to benefit from the fall in falling market this is a good way to make money but let us also discuss in detail how short selling works the term short selling refers to selling a stock that is not owned when the stock price is at high in the market and is expected to decline in future one can make gains by short selling this is done by borrowing the stock from someone who holds such stock thereafter selling the borrowed stock and waiting for the prices to fall once the stock price falls repurchase that is buy to cover the same stock at such low price and return the borrowed stock to the stock lender along with the stock lending charges whatever applicable my friends let me remind you one thing that you need not write up all this everything is given in your textbooks already now let us discuss the connecting concept that is long and short positions in futures contract some time back the kind of long and short position we were talking about that was with respect to the spot market or simply stock market however in derivative market particularly when we talk about futures contract the meaning of long position and short position it's little different rather i would say much more simple here there is no short selling involved at all so there is no short selling because in derivative market we don't have to actually buy and sell so a long position in futures would simply mean 
taking the position of a buyer means agreeing to buy at that contracted price and taking a short position means agreeing to sell at the contracted price. So assume that a particular futures contract right now is traded at 600 rupees per share and I have taken a long position that would mean that I have agreed to buy at 600 and say you have taken a short position means you have agreed to sell the same at 600. If the price move upward or downward accordingly two of us will be making gains or losses. So as we have discussed long and short positions in futures contract would mean a long position would be a position that indicates buying at the contracted price and short position is a position that indicates selling at the contracted price. Let us understand this with examples. You hold 100 shares of X limited currently priced at rupees 440 each. A 3 month futures contract is priced at rupees 452 each with a lot size of 100 shares. The margin to be deposited in the futures contract is rupees 4000. Explain how you can sell the shares at rupees 452 after 3 months. Now this is the wonderful concept my friends, a very very important concept, please try to pay attention. So the share what you are holding right now is currently priced at 440 and on the same share the futures contract is priced at 452. So what happens? Today its price, the spot market price is 440 and the futures price today quoted is at 452. How can you sell the shares at a guaranteed price of 452? That is using these futures contract. How can you do this? Answer is very simple. What you need to do is, you understand that your position with the stock is a long position because you are already holding the bought stock. You have purchased the stock earlier, you are holding it now, your position with the stock is a long position. So what you should do to sell the shares, you should take a short position in the futures contract. So in the futures contract, you enter at a contracted price of 452 with a short position today. What will be the impact after three months when the contract is to settle out, you will be eligible to sell all your shares at the price of 452 irrespective of the spot market price prevailing on that date. How is this going to work? Let us discuss that as well. So as an answer to this question, you can simply say as you want to sell the shares in future, that is after three months, you should enter into a futures contract of 100 shares with a short position at a contract price of rupees 452 per share and deposit margin of rupees 4000 and wait for three months. All right, moving ahead, you may write further. Assume that after three months, the price of the share in the spot market is rupees 430. You can still encash rupees 452 on selling such shares. How will you do that? Let us try to understand. You will have to sell the share at a price of rupees 430 in the spot market. On the other side, you will make a gain in the futures contract that is 452 is the contracted price at which you have taken the short position and 430 is the price prevailing on the settlement. So your gain will be rupees 22 per share. Accordingly, rupees 22 multiplied by 100, rupees 2200 of gain will be added to the margin balance. So realization will be 100 shares into 430 that is rupees 43,000 you will realize in the spot market and the profit from the futures contract will be 2,200. So ultimate realization in your hand will be rupees 45,200 which simply indicates a realization of rupees 452 per share even though the spot market price was rupees 430 per share. All right friends, let us move ahead and deal with another extreme possibility what if the share price would have risen up? So consider that after three months, the price of the share in the spot market is 470. 
though the price is 470 you will not be able to encash 470 you will still encash rupees 452 on selling such shares how you will have to sell the share at the price of 470 in the spot market and what happens on the other side you will incur a loss in futures contract because you have agreed to sell at 452 and the prevailing price on settlement is rupees 470 you incur a loss of rupees 18 per share now what will happen 18 multiplied by 100 that is rupees 1800 of loss will be reduced from your margin balance and realization what comes in your hand will be 47,000 you will realize from the spot market by selling your shares in the stock market and loss incurred in the futures contract will be reduced out of this realization so net realization in your hand will still be rupees 45,200 even though the share price has risen to 470 all right friends I'm sure you would have understood all these concepts very well these were basics of derivatives that become a foundation stone for you to attend the derivative sessions ahead if you find this video beneficial for yourself please don't restrict it for yourself like it and share it with as many people as you know who would also be seeking some guidance in derivatives friends I thank you all for giving me such a nice overwhelming response on YouTube and I have been reading all your comments and suggestions I am finding that you people have started placing lots of demands and I assure you as and when possible I'll upload all the videos that you have demanded so for more and more videos like this please stay tuned to my channel subscribe to my channel and friends thank you so much for attending this class